This is lecture four, part four, uh, writing system requirements for the introduction to systems engineering and the system thinking and analysis class. The material discussed in this lecture is coming from different sources and they are listed in this slide. As you can see, uh, we are using our textbook, but in addition to that, I'm, I'm including other references that are relevant for the material that we are gonna cover in terms of writing requirements for a system. So the agenda for today includes a recap on what, what we discussed already in terms of system requirements. And then we're gonna talk about specifying requirements, the types of requirements, how to write good requirements and common problems in writing requirements. It's important to highlight the difference between system design and system analysis. And that's what we are trying to do with this slide right here. Um, both of them depends on models and systems analysis is usually applied to a system that exists. Okay, so this is, this is something that you already have created, implemented. And the objective with the system analysis is to improve the performance or reduce the cost or to add a new component using new technology. So that's systems analysis. Um, the concept of system analysis is sometimes applied also to a system that is presumed to exist, but it's actually represented only by a model in a computer simulation. Um, where the objective is to evaluate the system. So this later part of systems analysis, which includes the use of computer simulation is an intrinsic part of the system design. Okay, so system analysis, again, it's looking at, uh, at a system that is already in place uh, that you are trying to improve. And when we, it also can be applied to, uh, to systems that are not already in place, but you can rely on computer simulations. And that's, that's the part that is an intrinsic part to the system design. We wanna use this type of, that type of analysis to at least have an idea of the performance of the new system that you are trying to design. Uh, and that's the focus of this course. In terms of system requirements, uh, we talk about the different, the hierarchy of the system itself going from the overall system to uh, the components, subcomponents, parts, and so on. Um, now, how's that, how is that connected to uh, system requirements? Well, I'm trying to illustrate this with uh, this picture. Um, so we have what we call the customer requirements to the left and, and then basically what we are trying to do in that triangle is to understand the mission of the system. What are the needs? What are the requirements? And then based on that information that is coming from the customer, we would develop what we call the originating requirements. Okay, so those are the ones that are gonna be guiding our design. And from there, we move to the, to the, to the right side of, of this figure in which we have the detail requirements. Here we are looking at technology. Here we are looking at how can we satisfy these requirements uh, by using a new system? How can we build something that can address the requirements that are stated by the customer? So when I say this is looking at technology, it's because we, we're gonna take this information that is provided by the customer and we wanna build something. And when we say building something, there's a technology, there's some technology attached to building such a system. Um, so this technology or these detail requirements are looking at the system, subsystem, component, and configuration requirements. The system design requirements or simply system requirements, we discuss those uh, on our previous lecture input output performance requirements, technology requirements, uh, and so on. 
So an important aspect of systems engineering is converting customer or user needs into a clear, concise, and verifiable system requirements. And that's the, the main idea of this lecture. Uh, I want you to be able to gather the information from the customer and then using that information about the customer needs, write in a very specific, clear, concise, and verifiable way the requirements for your system. Um, so while this lecture primarily focuses on system level requirements, it is equally applicable to all the other levels that I showed you on the previous slide. So a good requirement states something that is necessary, verifiable, and attainable. Okay, so those three things have to be there. Necessary, meaning that this is something that is really needed in your system. Verifiable means that you have a way to um, check if the system is performing uh, at this level. And attainable means that it's something that is possible. So to be verifiable, the requirement must state something that can be verified by examination, analysis, text, or demonstration. Usually you have some type of number that will let you know, okay, it has to meet this uh, certain level of performance. If a requirement is not attainable, then there's no need for writing it. Okay, so if that's something that the system cannot accomplish or that's something that it's not really needed for your system, then why write in it? Um, in terms of specifying requirements, many international standards, including the ISO, um, use the Shaw, Will, and Shield Convention when writing requirements. And these three words have a specific meaning in terms of requirements. When we use the word Shaw, this is a requirement um, basically, you shall to write a requirement that is contractually binding, must be implemented, and is implementation verified. So as I mentioned, contractually binding, this means that the, this needs to happen, okay? Uh, meaning that the performance has to be met by your system. So for example, the resolution shall be at least 300 dots in each. So this is something that you can verify with the performance of your system. Uh, and the use of the word shall is basically forcing your system to achieve this performance. The second one is will. These are facts or declaration of purpose. It is used to indicate statement of, of fact. And this is not subject to verification. So for example, the system will be replaced after three years. And then finally, the third word is should, which are for goals and again, no mandatory provisions. These are used to indicate a goal which must be addressed by the design, but it's not formally verified. So for example, the spacesuit should not impede crew mobility. Here are some additional examples. These are based on a computer printing type of system, like you have a computer that can print. Um, so that's the idea. So you wanna build a, a system that can do those things. So these are, are these are very simple example, but the idea is, is, is that you understand um, the differences between when to use these three different words. So you see on the first three, um, actually, in the first four requirements, there's the word shawl. And you can see that there's a figure that can be used for uh, performance verification in all those uh, requirements. Um, then the system will be replaced after three years is using the word uh, will. Um, and then the last one, the safer should not impede crew mobility. So again, uh, not verifiable um the the world the word should types of requirements okay we can classify them as non-mandatory or utility and then mandatory right um so non-mandatory or utility 
here we have an example in which we are trying to design a bridge. Um, and then the bridge will, will basically connect two roads and is uh, on top of a river, as you can see here in the, in the figure. Um, and then there are mandatory, non-mandatory requirements, right? So I'm, I'm illustrating that with this. Uh, so for example, the non-mandatory or utility requirements, um, here we have dinner should have items from each of the five food groups, grains, vegetables, fruits, milks, and meat. Again, the should is non-mandatory. You cannot verify, you don't have to verify it. Uh, with respect to the bridge, we have a requirement that says uh, the bridge deck should be at the same level as the road surface. 95% will be acceptable. Okay, so again, another non-mandatory or utility requirement. Now, if we look at the mandatory requirement, now we have some um, um, requirements that are forcing you to to make sure that you can verify this. Um, specifically, the, um, the system will not violate uh, federal, state, or local laws. That's not necessarily something that you, you can verify. But if you look at the, <clears throat> well, you can verify, uh, make sure that you're uh, making sure that the design is uh, achieving those uh, re federal, laws, state laws. But if you look at the second requirement, the bridge deck shall stretch from bank to bank, 95% is not acceptable. This is something that you know you have to make sure that this is satisfied. Um, so again, difference between shall, will, and should, how are they used is very important because they represent different things in terms of how are you going to use those requirements and how people will understand those requirements. So writing good requirements, as mentioned at the outset, a good requirement states something that is necessary, verifiable and attainable. To be verifiable, the requirement must state something that can be verified by examination, analysis, test, or demonstration. Uh, statements that are subjective or that contain subjective words, such as EC are not verifiable. And if a requirement is, is not attainable, it is no point of, in writing it. A good requirement should be clearly stated. Um, in terms of the need, if there's a doubt about the necessity, necessity of a requirement, then ask yourself, what is the worst thing that could happen if these requirements were not included? If you don't find, if you don't find an answer of, of any consequence, then you probably don't need this requirement. Verification, as you write a requirement, determine how would you verify it and determine the criteria for acceptance. This step will help ensure that the requirement is verifiable. Attainable, to be attainable, the requirement must be technically feasible and fit within budget schedule and other constraints. Um, again, if you're uncertain about whether the requirement is technically feasible, then conduct a research or studies to determine its feasibility. Uh, if still uncertain, then you may need to state what, would, what you want as a goal, not as a requirement. Um, even if, even if a requirement is technically feasible, it might, may not be attainable due to budget schedule or others. Okay, so if you need a, if you have a 20,000 budget, $20,000 budget, and you need a, you determine that you wanna buy a machine that costs 25,000, that's not attainable, it's over budget. So you cannot go in that direction. Um, so there's no point in writing a requirement for something that you cannot afford. Um, clarity, each requirement should express a single thought, be concise and simple. The requirement should not be misunderstood. It must be unambiguous. Simple sentences would most often suffice for a good requirement. Okay, one more time. Simple sentences 
will most often suffice for a good requirement. So we want to state something that is clear, um, not too long, okay, simple sentence that when someone reads the sentence is going to understand this, uh, it should understand the, the idea of the requirement. You don't want people re reading something and then understanding something different than what your intentions when, were when you wrote the, the requirement. Um, so again, requirements should be written in a clear, unambiguous manner. Uh, here's an example uh, from the literature. So Amelia, Edelia, Mr. Rogers said, why, why did you pop so much corn? I only need six cups. And I popped six cups, said Amelia Bedili. I meant six, six cups of popcorn, said Mr. Rogers. Then you should have say so. So this is a, an example of how the meaning behind what you wrote or what you expressed is not understood by the receiver of the communication. So we wanna make sure that our requirements are well written. So you should say what you mean. The March Hare went on. I do, Alice has replied. At least, at least I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you know, not the same thing a bit, say Matt Hatter. Why you might just as well say, I see what I eat is the same thing as I eat what I see. Um, so requirements are often written qualitatively. Use figures of merit to quantify them. So again, this helps in terms of verification. Verifying and validating requirements means ensuring that the set of requirements is complete and consistent a real world solution can be built that satisfy the requirements. And it can be proven that a real world system satisfies the requirements. Each requirement must be verified by some type of logical argument, inspection, modeling, simulation, analysis, test, or demonstration. In summary, Verification means building the system right, okay? So what this means is if you have a set of instructions, building the system right is that you are building the system using those instructions and you follow those steps. And at the end, you make sure that those steps are followed and that you accomplish every single steps of that process. That is verification. Validation is means building the right system. Validation means that the system that you built is actually performing as you expected. Um, right? So one is making sure that you built the system right. The other one is, did you build the right system? Is this system solving the problem? that you are addressing. Common problems in writing requirements, making bad assumptions. Bad assumptions occur due to lack of access to sufficient information or the information does not exist. Writing implementation, how, instead of the requirements, what? So a specification should state what is needed, not how it's to be provided. Describing operations instead of writing the requirements. This problem is somewhat similar to the implementation problem. In using incorrect terms in a specification, terms must be used in a very specific manner. As I stated earlier in this lecture, the use of shall, will, and should. Uh, using incorrect sentence structure or bad grammar. So requirements should be easy to read and understand, avoid bad grammar. Missing requirements, many requirements are missed 
because the team writing the requirements is focused on only one part of the system. So you should use a standard outline and checklist, making sure that you're covering that, how all the aspects in areas of your system. And finally, over specifying, stating something that is unnecessary or stating over stringent requirements. And that's the end of this lecture.